A new series of conversations aimed at better understanding young families will start this Saturday. And they come as Singapore continues to struggle with a low birth rate. Total fertility rate, or TFR, last year fell to a historic low of 1.1. Six virtual sessions will be organized covering those who are dating, engaged and married without children, as well as parents with children aged six and below and parents with children in primary school. Issues related to fertility will also be discussed. It's hoped the conversations will shed more light on Singaporeans' views on marriage and parenthood, as well as their concerns and aspirations. The findings could be used to tweak policies or come up with new initiatives. Now for more, we're joined by a minister in the Prime Minister's office, Indrani Raja. She oversees the National Population and Talent Division. Minister, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, first, help us understand how important are these conversations and what's at stake? It's, they're going to be very important. What's at stake? Well, by 2030, one in four of our citizens is going to be age 65 and above. That's nearly 24% of our population going to be older and age, you know, about 65. At the same time, as you mentioned earlier, uh, TFR for 2020 was 1.1. Uh, uh, not, not, not great. So we, we want to make sure that Singapore is a place where families can feel happy to have children, to feel supported. Um, it, it's an important thing. We want to make sure that we have a, a strong Singaporean core uh, and that we have a thriving Singaporean population. So tremendously important. Minister, how did the pandemic affect marriage and parenthood in Singapore? Are we perhaps reading too much into the stats this time around? Well, the stats that we had that I disclosed earlier in earlier this year in Parliament were really the statistics as of the first quarter of last year. And the number of births had uh, fallen. Um, so the reasons would have been pre-pandemic reasons. But during the pandemic last year, obviously marriages got postponed or delayed. And that's going to have a knock-on effect for families starting children, uh, you know, setting up and having children. Um, and at the same time, I think there were some have been worried about the economic impact of the pandemic. So we do expect that there will be some impact. Um, on the other hand, people have had more time to spend with each other. Couples have had more time at home with each other. Um, some have said that, you know, the, the whole pandemic experience has brought home to them how important it is to have other people in their lives to have strong relationships. So we'll have to see how it, it comes out, the, the data for what happened in the last half of, of 2020 isn't in yet. Um, we're looking to, to, we'll keep an eye on it to see what comes out of that. But whatever it is, uh, with the TFR of 1.1, we do need to do something. And Minister, you've targeted a broad spectrum of views with these conversations. Do you expect to hear things that haven't already come up before, like, you know, things that we are very familiar with, like the work-life balance uh, discussion or cost of living, education and, and stress, for example? Well, I'm sure that some of these will come up, but this is the first conversation that we're having um, post-pandemic, as it were. So what we do need to hear is what kind of effect uh, and impact the pandemic has had on couples, whether it's changed their views on, on anything. So that's one big uh, part of it, because I'm sure that after going through a year of pandemic, some things must surely have changed. But the other thing about the conversations is that we're conducting them stage by stage of the life journey. So I'm, I'm going to be speaking with those who are dating, not yet married, speaking with the other group who are married and just have had young children, then speaking with those who um, have children in primary school, um, and then speaking with those who have experienced uh, fertility issues, and also speaking to those who have uh, spouses of other nationalities, transnational fa families. So you can see that we're looking at each group because each group may have different uh, issues. And the end goal at the end of all of this is to really have a Singapore that's made for families. We want to understand what it is that's 
that's going to make for a family that feels supported, that feels secure, uh, happy to have children, um, and where there are networks of support around them. So that's what we're really looking for, to be able to, to build a place, a country, uh, which is family friendly. Minister, the decision to become a parent is such a personal one. You know, we've been talking about this issue for quite a long time and the government has done so much to support parents as well in making this decision. What would you say to those who are calling for less talk and more action? Well, a lot has been done in terms of for housing, for example. We have uh, increased the, the housing grants. We've made preschool more affordable. We've also taken steps to make sure that there's better support on the healthcare front. But as you say, this decision is deeply personal. Different people have different factors that they take into consideration. And not, well, a, a good part of it will be financial or monetary. But I, I, I rather suspect, based on conversations that I've already had, that a good part of it is also to do with what kind of support you have. So it's not just a matter of preschool subsidies, for example, but are there preschools nearby? Do you have family support? Uh, do you have support amongst friends in, in the community? Um, do you have the right kind of support at work such that if you need to take time off to attend to a young child, uh, or if you happen to have an elderly parent, you can do that with flexible work arrangements. So we need to hear from couples and, and families what's really important to them what would make them feel that they're living in a place which is totally family friendly uh, and where everybody is really on, on board to making sure that we have families who feel strong and supportive. And one last question for you, Minister. Uh, what can we expect after these conversations take place? Well, we're going to use the feedback that we have, obviously, to firstly see whether we're on track for some of the uh, policy measures that we would like to, to do. And then also look to see whether there's anything we've missed out or are we completely off track and do we need to develop new things? It's really very important to hear from couples themselves and understand what's important to them because only then can you actually come up with policy and measures that are meaningful uh, and will make a difference and move the needle. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us this evening. Minister in the Prime Minister's office, Indrani Raja. Now, the series or this series of conversations is expected to last until September, and you can sign up on the REACH website if you'd like to contribute as well.